Thanksgiving. I think that's the last time I probably saw y'all was before that. So we are glad that y'all are here. But anyway, we are glad that y'all are here. And today we kind of finish up with our chronological study of Swanee County's history. So we're gonna go from the 1980s until today. I may make it two times, uh, two presentations next time. But we're gonna finish up to the current day and then starting next month, Lord willing, we are going to go into topical studies. And we've got, I don't know, 15, 18 topical studies, things like crime, military history, um, railroads, African Americans, um, creepy stuff, just all kinds of different presentations on topics. And so they'll pull some of the stuff that I've used over the uh, series so far and put them kind of more of a, here's what we talk about with military history, here we go, <coughs> those kinds of things. Plus a few other things I throw in there. So are there any questions before I begin? All righty. So the 1980s, we have President Ronald Reagan being elected as president at the very beginning of that decade, and so his economic policies kind of be called Reaganomics for a lot of people, and so that kind of kicks into high gear uh, during the whole 80s, and we've got lots of things going on, lots of expansion. Uh, before that time with uh, Jimmy Carter, we've got lots of other issues. Uh, before that, we had the OPEC oil embargo. We've got the issue with Iran's revolution, and so there have been lots of economic issues in the late 70s especially that have impacted the United States. And so as we get into the early 1980s, Reagan shifts gears. Um, you know, we've got the Star Wars program. We've got um, the issues with the Soviet Union coming to full blast. And uh, it does a lot of good things for the country overall. And eventually ends the Cold War, among other things. And so as we go through, we've got lots of expansion here, even in Suwannee County. One of the things, which you see the picture, is the Spirit of the Suwannee Music Park. Um, a month or two ago, we talked about the original intent was to perhaps make that as a music park, kind of like Six Flags. And that did not go anywhere, but this was bought by the Suwannee County Development Authority uh, and through the county and was a park of sorts. But they didn't do too much with it until it was sold to private individuals, the Cornette family, uh, later in the, the uh, 90s and such. And then it expanded to what it is today, of course. People from all over the country and all over the world go there today to visit. I mean, right now we've got uh, all the Christmas things going on out there. Lots of lights. You've got music festivals galore. I mean, sometimes these festivals double the population of the entire county. So a lot of business comes in to Spirit from Spirit of the Swanee's operations. So they're one of the things that have benefited uh, the county. Big economic boost and have led to other things going on. Now, uh, another thing, let's see if this will work, uh, we've got patches. One of the funny things, and, and let me preface this by saying, 20 years ago probably, uh, me were in the clerk's office at that point also, and my supervisor, who was not originally from Florida, came in and showed several of us a video of, hey y'all, my, my friend in Kentucky sent this to me on YouTube, it's pretty cool. It's about this cool horse. And he starts playing it, and it's like, that's our courthouse, that's our old McDonald's. So uh, this, this horse, who was pretty well known at the time, Patches was his name, uh, was from Swanee County. Who is a hamburger. <laughs> Every time we'd start to go anywhere, he would just act like he wanted to go with us. So I said, Sir Robert, I said, Robert, I said, he acts like he wants to go. Why don't we uh, fix the car so he can get in and out? He says, okay, good idea. So we fixed the car. And sure enough, next time we went to town, he hops in and sets down, and he's ready to go. Let's go get us a TV party. Oh, and, uh, we 
state halfway across the country and so people were finding it on YouTube uh, interesting so patches the horse there you go so your animals probably can't do that can they <laughs> <coughs> mine can alright moving on so I have talked about it in previous presentations uh, lamenting the fact that for much of the mid and late 1900s we had a lot of destruction of our old historic buildings the whole downtown area historic area changed its look from the 1950s to the 1980s well finally as the 1980s rolled around some folks started realizing you know what maybe we should start saving some of these old buildings and not just tearing them down and replacing them with gaudy ugly looking modern structures and so some of the buildings that they were looking at uh, were the old passenger depot and the freight depot there on 129 north just north of the railroad tracks and so a group came together called pride in action and they were able to raise funds uh, to not only purchase the old passenger depot but to cut it in half and move it to a new location because the railroad at the time decided they wanted the property and they were going to tear the building down if nobody bought it and so pride in action bought it uh, had the company cut it in half and moved it there's pictures of the museum showing this whole process and they moved it to north of the freight depot so when people come here originally not from here and look at the building and realize it's a passenger depot they think all the railroad tracks were on the north side of the freight depot that's not right they were on the south side where this building originally was and so that was uh, raised with approximately eighty five thousand dollars to move it and then the property was twenty five thousand dollars so you know, hundred ten thousand dollars in nineteen eighties, early nineteen eighties, was a good bit of money, and that was raised locally. 
people were coming and donating money. And so they moved it, they put it back together, and unfortunately there was not enough funding to renovate the building at that time. So it sat looking like this uh, for, oh, 20 something years before we were, we were able to get money between the historical commission and the county, able to get enough money and grant money to repair it and restore it. And today it is now owned by the county and leased out to North Florida College and it is there at Live Oak Campus for North Florida College. If you were to go there today, even today, even with all the renovations, you will see the line where they cut it. I mean, cut the building in half, pulled it apart, and moved it. And so that, that line is still there. They left it uh, when they did their, the uh, renovations. I was a uh, part of that project, and I think I'm the one that wrote up the, the plaque on the sort of plaque on there. Well, excuse me. Where yes. Was it, where was it located? The board got on the, the south side. Between the where the museum is today, the freight depot, and the railroad tracks, it was between there. The what? The what? It was right between the, the museum on 129. Oh, okay. The freight depot, and then between that uh, and the railroad tracks, it was there on that open area. Oh, uh, okay. That's where it was. So they basically just moved it from one side of the freight depot to the other side. Now, yes. Can I ask questions during? Yeah, go this? ahead. This is my first time. Yep, go ahead. Come on. Now. Some of the history going back, well, did Mr. Dowling help pay for some of that when it first started many years ago to, to get the railroad built up there? He helped with one of the railroads. There was, we had okay. we had four or five at the time. He, built, oh, okay. he helped with one of them, yes. I didn't know if it was this building, the other building, or what? Uh, this building was built or completed in 1909. The freight depot, which is now the museum, was built in 1903. Uh, that was the Atlantic coastline. And this passenger depot was a union Passenger Depot, it was kind of a conglomeration or a, uh, several railroads, the ACL, uh, the SAL, uh, the Florida Railway, and the Live Oak Perry and Gulf, which was helped establish by Thomas Dowling. They all kind of went in together to help build yeah. that one passenger uh, depot for everybody. So so in that way, yes, you could say Mr. Dowling yeah, helped with help, it. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's been renovated. It's a, it's a beautiful building, beautiful building. That, that was a very busy place. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I mean that was the railroad. You, a lot of people would come here. Yeah. People would go on trips, even go to football games down to Perry and whatnot. Uh, you know, a lot of people would load up there at the, the passenger depot and move on. So it was a very, very happening a depot there. Plus the freight depot with all the freight going through. Even after passenger service stopped, there's the freight service sometimes. And so the freight depot was used for a long time also until it was kind of abandoned in the 1960s also after they, they stopped stopping in Live Oak. And so that building also was restored using grants from the state and, and federal <coughs> state. Um, and that's owned by the Historical Commission even today. Now, I'm chairman of that group and we own the building. We run the museum through it. Now, um, originally we were not running the museum there. The, the museum started in 1980. Uh, the, the Historical Commission, which ran the museum originally, and that was located in the top floor of the old City Hall, which is now the Chamber of Commerce. And so that's where the museum started. And then once they renovated the freight depot, let's see if I've got, I think the next picture is. Yeah, once they renovated the freight depot, that building there, uh, it was, the museum was moved to that building because there's a lot more space. And a separate group was established called the Museum Association to actually operate the day-to-day -day operations of the museum. Uh, that group folded in 2017, and so the Historical Commission took over the museum functions also. And so we run that, like I said, I'm chairman of that. We're always, always having uh, new things, new displays put in there related to Suwannee County's history. If you haven't been in there recently, you need to go in there. Our curators are doing a great job uh, of displaying stuff. We just opened up, in the last month, we opened up a room uh, of just military history of Suwannee County. So uh, we're always trying to expand and find things related to Suwannee County that are historic. A lot of people bring us stuff and it's it's either not related to Suwannee County history at all, they're just, I think, empty in their, their attics, or it's not really something that we would like to have in the museum. So uh, we have to be discerning sometimes of what we take and what we don't take. But. Um, so it was great for these buildings. <coughs> Unfortunately, there were a lot of other buildings, places like uh, the Swanee Hotel, the Parsley Building, 
and a ton of old homes that are gone. It was just too late to save them. They were already destroyed at this point. That's an interior I shot actually from a couple of years ago of the museum. How many of y'all have been to the museum? How many of y'all have been in the last year? Awesome. Good. Thank you. Y'all need to go back. It's lots more updated since then. So we're always adding stuff. All right. Let's see. Moving on. Other things going on in the 1980s. In 1986, the state purchases property off just off one, uh, I-75 and CR 136 towards White Springs to establish a state farmer's market, allowing uh, markets, uh, the, the farmers have an easier access to all the different markets in the state. And so that was a success at the time. I'm not sure it's used so much today, but back in the 80s, it was good. Banking changes. We see in the 1980s and following lots of banking changes, lots of them. For instance, what used to be the old commercial bank of Live Oak, which had been established in the early 1900s and had been located downtown and was moved to this building after Hurricane Dora hit in 1964. They built this building in 1966. Well, the commercial bank became Nations Bank in the 1980s. Then in the 1990s, it became CMB Bank. Then it became Mercantile. And now it is TD Bank, last I checked. I should have looked when I drove down here to the, but it's TD Bank. Uh, so that one has changed names several times. First Federal, which was established in the 1960s, uh, it became, it went from First Federal Savings and Loan Association to First Federal Savings Bank in the 1980s as they expanded their, their operations. And they continue to expand into different locations, even outside of, of Florida in a couple instances. And they are now First Federal Bank of Florida, so they continue to expand. I forget how many places they've got. Yes, sir. They've got like three or four buildings there now. Oh like yeah, the yeah. Old, the old, the older looking house there is that the original? Or no, is that just something that was. That those were houses that they the bought, that like the roof house and some others that they purchased and renovated. Yeah. Oh, about that. Yeah. Good question. Good question. So it was this building, and uh, I should have put a picture of how it looked before these renovations. I think it might still be on some of their letterhead stuff, the old sloped at the bottom. Can't even describe what it looked like, but the old the building, the way it originally looked, was a lot different than this. They updated this, what, about 20 years ago or so, 25 years ago? You, you don't have a picture of the house that used to be there, do you? Not in this stuff, I do not. But yeah, there are a lot of houses here. Uh, I've got some back in the office that probably shows that. But, but yeah, as Keith said, uh, they did buy several of the houses just south of here for expanded operations. And actually, I mean, those are historic homes, so that was a way to preserve them in a former fashion anyway. Um, one of the funny stories with one of those houses, I can't remember which one now, was uh, the guy that owned it in the early 1900s, and his, his name will come to me eventually, but he worked with the railroad, and he wanted to run for office in Lido. And the house was just outside the city limits. Basically, the, the city limits line was right where his house ended. So what he did was he built a bedroom, his, the master bedroom, on the north side of the building, which was then within the city limits, that he could run for office. So that's as far as the city limits ran, was just right Back there. then, and that was after it had been extended a couple yeah. times, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, they preserved those buildings. And now, of course, the headquarters is no longer live up. They've moved over to Lake City and have a big building over there. Other banks, First National Bank, which was another one of the old banks that had been around uh, since the early, early 1900s. They uh, sold out to Barnett Bank in 1986. And uh, that's what I remember them as, as I was going to school. And then after I graduated, they became Nations Bank in 98. Then they merged with Bank of America in 1999. And they are, as of last time I checked, Ameris Bank. This is a picture from 1974 showing them still as the First National Bank of Live Oak. See the Methodist Church over on the right-hand side. The old, what used to be called the Pizza Place. Uh, for many years, the Sports Connection. Now it's Amazing Grays. Uh, the courthouse is just out of sight on the right-hand side. Apparently one of the local cops was eating pizza at the time. <laughs> In 1988, another bank came into Suwannee County. And that was Citizens Bank of Library. 
They merged in 1993 with uh, Community National Bank, which was CNB, and then they became part of Mercantile Bank and then part of TD Bank. Now, when the first commercial, that old building right here, was bought out by Mercantile and TD a Bank, they sold this building, no longer needed for their, their banking stuff, they sold it to the city of Lyman, which then put their police department in there. That's where it still is today. So that picture shows them as the police department. So those are some things just in Lyman. Brantford also had some banking changes in the 1980s and 1990s. One of them being one of their old banks, the Brantford State Bank, which I believe was established in 1911. They sold out to Capital City Bank during this era, and that's them today. And we've got some more coming up in a minute I'll talk about. But in between all that, as we get into the late 1980s, in 1989 and 1990, we've got a woman running loose in Florida. Her name is Eileen Wernos. Nice lady. She was called the Damsel of Death. She was a prostitute, and she killed at least seven men in Florida, all throughout the state. She claimed originally to have been attacked by them, and she killed them in self-defense was her original claim. But then, come to find out, she just killed them in cold blood to rob them or, or something like that. So she, she basically murdered seven men in cold blood, at least seven men, in cold blood. She was found guilty of six of the murders, they never found the seventh body, so who knows what she did with him, but they found uh, six of the seven bodies. Now, I'm talking about it here in our Swanee County history presentation because one of the last victims, his car was found in Swanee County, which means she was in Swanee County at some point in her crime spree. Uh, she was finally, she was found guilty. She was executed in 2002. She was the second woman in Florida executed since 1848. I actually knew the, the cremation, of the owners of the cremation service that cremated her. So that was kind of an interesting story to hear from them. Yeah, not a nice lady. Last month we talked about Ted Bundy. That was a serial killer that came through here in the 70s. She was our 80s slash early 90s. I hope we don't have any more after that. But you never know. So the, the, the car was found in the Brantford area of the county? Um, somewhere down on the south side of the county. Area. I don't recall exactly where I go back and look, but you know, just off a road somewhere kind of thing. But yeah, in Swanee County. I didn't learn that until many, many years later. All right, speaking of crime, Swanee County built a new jail in the 19, early 1990s. I believe 1993 is when it was completed. But basically the state had come in and looked at our old jail which was directly behind the courthouse where there's now a parking lot. And they decided, you know what, this building is 50 years old. You gotta do a lot of updates or replace it. And it was just cheaper to replace it and uh, build a new one, a much larger one. And again, completed early 1990s at a cost of $5.9 million. There was a discussion of where to put it. Uh, the discussion was, do we put it with the courthouse? because they go to court, so you bring them back and forth real easily, or do we build it out of town somewhere and have to transport the folks in? Well, they decided to build it there, you know, pretty much prime real estate, downtown uh, Live Oak, and that's where it is today. Now, whenever they build another one, they may move them. We just don't know. Uh, it takes up a lot of good real estate, and uh, <laughs> it's funny when you, uh, I'm trying to remember who it was, somebody I knew, I won't say their name, but somebody I knew, we were Googling one time, or they were Googling um, sex offenders in Swanee County, because you can you know, look up that to see who lives around you. And they pulled it up and it said a lot of sex offenders lived at 224 Pine Avenue. It's like, why are all these sex offenders living in this one location? <laughs> it's because they were in jail. <laughs> and I pointed that out to them. I'm like, oh, okay, it makes sense now. Because they didn't want to live there around there. <laughs> A little bit about that building. Yes. <coughs> My uncle had that taxi coach station there for me. Okay. And mm -hmm. they needed to put yeah. the drink, a place to catch some water, but yeah. they didn't have enough room mm -hmm. of that plot. So 
they said, well, can we just lease that property to be able to do that because they couldn't do the building right. without having that little bit of area for the runoff for them. Yep. And so uh, they said, well, I never use that back there anyway. So yeah, I'll lease it to you with the understanding that at one point we'll, we'll make you an offer to purchase it. So they did a number of years later. Eventually. But uh, very interesting that they couldn't do that unless they had a little bit of spot back there to catch a little bit of the water. Just a hair, that's crazy. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a little, all you need. I mean, downtown, and I was talking to some, one of my workers yesterday was complaining about downtown live of not having enough parking. Y'all know that, right? And it's like because Live Oak was established 50 years before we had cars. So uh, it's hard to find parking in downtown Live Oak. You go to some older places, you know, y'all been to St. Augustine, right? Those old original park, St. George's Street and all, how narrow it is and how much parking costs. At least we're not charging for parking right now downtown Live Oak. We used to at one point in the 50s or so, 60s, but. Um, not now. I hope that didn't put some, some thought in somebody's head to do it. <coughs> if so, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so new jail was built. But then we go back to even more banking changes as we get into the 1990s. Uh, one of them being Lafayette State Bank. Started off, uh, or expanded, excuse me, into Branford, and then uh, eventually came to Lila, where it is also today. So several of those. We've got lots of building, lots of construction, lots of changes to, to Swanee County. Another, uh, another thing that happens in several locations during this era we're talking about is libraries. This building here, for instance, built in 1996. This replaced the one that was in downtown Lima, just behind kind of the courthouse and beside the old jail. Uh, that one had been built, the original part of it built in 1948. There was a one-story portion built in 1948, and then in 1966 they built a two-story portion adjoining it. And so that was the one I grew up going to as I was in school and whatnot, and they built this one the year I graduated, basically. I was already out of college. Um, so I came back to a new library, which was cool, because I loved to read. And uh, that it was, it's great to have. I mean, y'all got a lot more space here than the old one did. Where was the old one located? The old one was located at the courthouse, the parking lot, part of the parking oh, lot. The parking lot. Yeah. Okay. yeah, facing Warren Street. So facing the, the street north of the courthouse. Uh, this one is 20,000 square feet, basically. A lot bigger than what downtown Live Oak had. Yeah, a lot bigger. And there were issues with the one in downtown Live Oak. Uh, they had the huge windows on the front of the building, and they would sometimes crack. They'd come in one morning, and those huge glass windows would be cracked. And some other little settling issues, so they decided let's build their new location, which is a good thing because when Tropical Storm Debbie came through, which we'll talk about later in this presentation, uh, there was a sinkhole underneath it, and that's why things were cracking and messing up. I think at one point the elevator even couldn't work because it was so out of whack. Uh, so, you know, issues, issues, issues. So, Live Oak gets a new library in 1996. In 1999, Branford gets a library. It was named in honor of a former longtime sheriff, uh, Robert Leonard, who passed away many years, 20 years ago now. But he was the sheriff for... Oh, 20, 24 years in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, mid 90s. And so they built this new library. I think part of it was funded by uh, sheriff's funds from confiscation of drugs and that kind of stuff, uh, which is another reason they named the building after him. So it was built, I think there's an expansion project that's been approved by the state to expand it even further, mm -hmm. which will be good because they need some more space down there. And in 2017, Dowling Park, got a new library, got a library. They didn't have a library, they got a library. And so we've had three, basically the entire Swanee County part of the Swanee River Regional Library System got either new libraries or their first libraries for the first time during this era we're talking about, the last 40 years. So that's good, that is good. Several other government buildings have been built since 1980, including several post offices. Uh, this one was, is the newer one in Branford, but we've got McAuliff and O'Brien, other places like that. And as of a year or so ago, Live Oak has a new post office using an older building, renovated. So pretty much every, more or less every community in, Live Oak, or in Swanee County has gotten a new post office also in the last 40 years. 
But it wasn't just government related. We have lots of businesses coming in, lots of schools uh, changes, lots of businesses coming in. Um, Publix, Walmart, Holiday Express, Lowe's, things like that have come into Suwannee County since 1980. We've also got older buildings like the old jail, the old library, several old schools like this old high school that were torn down, demolished either to make way for new buildings or better parking, or in this building's case, a retention pond because there's a sinkhole under it, which is why after Hurricane Dora they couldn't use it anymore. Uh, it's now a retention pond between First Baptist and the courthouse. Uh, we've also lost buildings such as the old Swanee Democrat building, which was burned in a uh, fire and arson in 1995. Um, when I was going through cancer treatments in the early 2000s uh, for my synovial sarcoma, my doctor, the one who took it out and did what he could with my arm, was telling me, yeah, I, I, I dealt with somebody from Live Oak and it apparently was this arsonist, uh, either the arsonist or his wife, that he was having to, to help with because he had had cancer and stuff. So that was an interesting topic of discussion. <laughs> that was the uh, Swanee Democrat. Swanee Democrat, Democrat, yes. Yeah. Now the sad thing with the Swanee Democrat fire, and I tell this to people sometimes, is uh, we've lost a lot of our history yeah. because of the burning of the Swanee right. Democrat. The ironic, ironic thing was a week or two later, they were going to have all this newspaper of microfilm. They were slated for microfilming and, and you know, saving it, and they burned it down right before it could be done. So the library's got a lot of copies of the Democrat. We've got some of the courthouse. Um, University of Florida, George Smathers Library System has some, but I know there's like 10 years where there, nobody has any, and it's sad. It's sad. We've lost a lot of history. It's a lot harder to come by these days. Yes, sir. Yeah, you said it was burned down by an arsenal. Is there a story behind that? I mean, was there a story when the person was burned down? <laughs> I don't know all the story. I don't remember. Or, okay. I don't remember all the story at this point. Now I know the previous time it burned down, the early 1900s, it was a guy who just gotten fired, probably, and he just happened to be seen in downtown when it happened, and he just happened to leave on a train about the time the fire was found. This other one, I don't remember. I think it was an insurance related with one of the other businesses related. Uh, that was because it wasn't just a Democrat. The Democrat wasn't. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't the Democrat. It was one yeah, of the other, was, yeah. like the shoe shop or whatever. That there were several yeah, buildings. Right. <coughs> so that was what I remember. I, I videoed that that fire, but then of course my videos got burned up. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was off at college when it happened, and uh, came back. It's like, oh, so you didn't have a bike. I had, I, yeah, I had an alibi. <laughs> <laughs> I had an alibi for sure. I was 300 miles away, <laughs> but yes, yeah, unfortunate. That was so very unfortunate. It was very for him, for just history in general for Swanee County. I was just start going to start my ninth grade year in that building. We'd only went oh, that for a little be. while, and then the flood come, mm -hmm. and then couldn't use it. Couldn't use it. Nope. And that's funny because in the 1930s, this building was built in 28, I believe. In like 1933, 35, there were some issues on one of the corners, some settling they called it. So they had to fix it. Well, that was apparently the start of that That's sinkhole, sinkhole, and they didn't know it until Dora hit 30 years later. So it's sad. I mean, some of those things you got to tear down, unfortunately. Um, so lots of changes related to that. We also have the 911 addressing system introduced in the early 1990s to help with emergency response. We are now part of the enhanced 911 system, uh, which has even more information, more details. So all of our roads got renumbered. So us old folks have been here all of our lives. I don't remember what number that road is. It's Nobles Ferry, or it's Stagecoach, or it's whatever. We, we just we still a lot of us old locals remember the old names, and fortunately most of the responders do too. But uh, yeah, I mean a number is a number for most people. But if it's a name, that's easy to remember. But it's helpful. I mean they can locate where you are and all that good stuff. So if you want to watch. Rescue 911 with, with uh, William Shatner, you can have at it and think about it while you watch it. What it Rescue 911? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a Star Trek fan, so I, I did watch that. All right, new schools. Several new schools added since 1980, or expansions have been done. We had a new elementary school, a new intermediate school, 
a uh, new middle school in Live Oak, and then a new elementary school in Ramp, of course, this is the one just next door to us, right over here in the north, which took up some of our uh, parade parking space after the Winn-Dixie building took up our previous parking space from the 90s and before that we used to park at, before the, the parades. So lots of new schools or expansion, uh, renaming of schools, Old West and Old East, close by here, because uh, West was the best and East was the beast. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> West Depending was the on best. Which school, you know, we're West <laughs> was the best and we the East. <laughs> But those who were renamed, they were expanding additional uh, classrooms added to them, and they were renamed at one point. They were what? Swanee Elementary, Swanee Intermediate, and now they're Springcrest and Riverside. Well, the or East School was primary. Yes. Then we had the new elementary, yes. and then the West School was intermediate. intermediate. <coughs> I can never remember. My wife worked at Old East. That's mm -hmm. Old East Elementary, I guess. Because she taught kindergarten. But now they have been renamed, of course, a few years ago. They changed things up to have different kinds of schools because parents got tired of going to pick up kids from three or four different schools because there are only two grades or so to each. So they've now reverted to a kindergarten through fifth grade um, for each school, and each one focuses on different, you know, leadership, uh, STEM stuff, arts and crafts. Um, so again, I don't remember all their names. Riverside, Springcrest, and something else. My kids don't go to school here anymore, so I don't recall them. That's Brantford's new elementary school that they had built. Sports. Sports have been important in Swanee County for a long time. And in this area we're talking about, specifically the late 80s and early 90s, Swanee counties, the Swanee High Bulldogs were state champions for, I guess it'd be 3A at the time. Uh, the 3A state champions under coach Mike Pittman there on the bottom left of that picture. So, four years in a row, pretty awesome. Not just sports, but also academics. Academics, uh, academics have been very uh, highly rated in Swanee County. And the Swanee High Brain Bowl team has won more state championships than anybody else. And if you look closely at the guy on the top left, you may recognize him. If you add 100 pounds on him, you may recognize him. Still nerdy looking, but you know. <laughs> I love, that's about the only thing I missed from high school, honestly, is brain bowl. That was fun. I what year was that? Uh, this was 94 when we were state champs. So, uh, yeah, 94. I was a sophomore. Everybody else on there was either a senior or a junior. It was fun. Under Mike Pate, he was the coach at the time. I was going to say, your coach was Coach good. Mike he Pate. Was really good. Yeah, he was good. Many years. Yes. Many, many years. But, you know, like I said, that's the only thing I miss from high school, really, to be He's honest. He's a good guy. Yeah. Helped make money for college, too. Got scholarship money, which paid for what my scholarship was going to pay for. So it was good. Plus, we had to go to places like Disney World. I mean, you know, come on. That was fun back then. And we, we were in the resort, so we could stay on extra long. And so we'd, we'd ride the monorail, and we'd start saying, the portrait of my tanks out of how those this all the time. And please stay clear of the doors. <laughs> anyway, my wife eventually got me a shirt with it, because I would say it so much. All right, as we get into 1990, Saddam Hussein of Iraq invaded the small neighboring uh, nation of Kuwait. The rich nation of Kuwait invaded it, and so the local National Guard, which at the time was the 269th Engineering Company, was called up along with many other people uh, to start what was called Operation Desert Shield, which brought hundreds of thousands of troops into Saudi Arabia and surrounding countries, and then the war began and it became Operation Desert Storm. So our engineering company was in the thick of it, uh, doing a lot of their engineering work, and uh, a very short war, thankfully, just uh, a few weeks, more or less, to push Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait. Now, when our folks returned home, these, these guys here returned mm -hmm. home, uh, it was a hero's welcome, which was something very different from the last major war we've been in, which was Vietnam, when they were you know, spit on and all kinds of bad stuff. Not necessarily here, but overall in the country. You know, lots of bad stuff, just 
looked down upon, but Desert Storm, they came back as heroes. And uh, fortunately, we had very few fatalities and casualties overall. Uh, what year was that again? That was 1990. 1990. Well, you know, yeah, pretty much 1990. Yeah. And I guess 91 is when the war, January of 91 is when it started. Uh, the shock and awe air attacks. <coughs> To wear down their defenses, and then we went in ground war didn't last too long. <coughs> so very good. Since then, our National Guard unit has been called up uh, for duty in Iraq and Afghanistan during the War on Terror. In 2007, they were renamed 868th Engineer Company. And that's what they've been ever since. And poor me, even though I drove by the place a lot, I didn't even recognize that it was a different unit name for a few years after that. So shame on me, I guess. Uh, but it is, uh, they continue to operate out of the Lee Wadsworth Armory there by the Coliseum. And uh, our unit basically has been called up more than any other unit in Florida in its history. So uh, proud of our, our men and women that serve that. My son is now in the National Guard, so uh, I can understand that. And, um, you know, lots of good stuff they do. New recreational facilities in 1997. County Commission realized that their current recreation facilities on Duval Street in Live Oak were inadequate. Just too small, the neighborhood wasn't necessarily the greatest, uh, parking was not so good, they needed more space. And so they purchased up property just south of uh, the middle school, which had been recently completed. They're on South Walker Street. They bought up a lot of acreage and they established a new sportsplex and First Federal was very helpful and very generous in getting that done and so it was renamed the first federal sportsplex and so they've added lots of stuff over the years tennis courts uh, baseball fields basketball playgrounds etc uh, the county recently purchased adjoining property just to the south of it i forget how many acres do you remember keith uh, you know, a couple hundred, 300 acres worth of property to the south of it. And so that allows for even additional expansion. And, and ours, compared to any of the other counties around us, they're, they're great. They're great facilities. Columbia County looks at ours and tries to model theirs after ours. So lots of good stuff out there. Uh, Greg Scott, up until pretty much the beginning of this year, was a recreation director there for about 30, 30 something years. And he did a lot of good things there. Now he's county administrator. And Jason Furry is the uh, Parks and Rec director. But lots of good things happening there at the Sportsplex. They've got walking track, they've got skating park, all kinds of different stuff there. So that was another uh, facility that was, uh, was built or added since 1980. And they put a splash pad there recently. And the, yeah, the splash pad, thank you. Splash pad. So all, all kinds of stuff for the kids, all the way up to the adults. Other new businesses, I already kind of mentioned some of them. Places like Walmart, which was new uh, to the 21st century, uh, early 21st century. Then Publix had expanded into this new location they, they operated starting, I guess, last year or so. Lots of small businesses, and every year we get more and more. Our economic uh, development group, uh, office I should say, does a good job of bringing businesses in. Our economic development director as of last week uh, just received some kind of certification. It was mission at the county commission meeting. Uh, so uh, Jimmy does a good job. Jimmy, Nor Jimmy Norris, our, our economic development director and tourism development director, does a lot of good things for our county and brings in a lot of folks, a lot of folks. 2012, June, <laughs> Tropical Storm Debbie. Now I see this spelled D-E-B-B-Y, D-E-B-B-I-E. Actually, on this presentation, I usually have IE, but then the next page, next slide I'm going to show you, the Weather Channel has it as D-E-B-B-Y, so I'm going to leave it as that from now on, because the Weather Channel said it. There you go. <laughs> but uh, it hit us. How many of y'all were here when that happened? Y'all missed it? I saw it on TV. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I had no idea. I didn't realize y'all weren't here at that point. Okay. Oh, lots of flooding. That is downtown Live Oak. That is Highway 90, looks like. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice, nice flooding. Some places the county got 30, I think 38 inches, somebody told me. 
Officially, it was 20-something inches, but some people got more than that. It flooded downtown Live Oak. It flooded all kinds of places. Places that had never flooded before in our known history were flooded. Um, it's never a good sign when Jim Cantori shows up That's on exactly your doorstep. Right. So I actually met him because he was down there, and I, I went and talked to him that morning. It was kind of interesting. His sister lives in Lake City, which was kind of funny. I did not know that, but um, in talking to him, I found that out. So, yeah, when he shows up, you need to run. <laughs> But he was there, lots of, uh, lots of rain, lots of rain. Um, I-10 even closed because of flooding. We were pretty much, for a little while there, we were almost totally cut off from everybody else, except for part of Columbia <laughs> County. So it was, it was pretty bad. A lot of people lost power, lost all kinds of stuff. Um, that's another view of Highway 90. And these pictures look very similar to the Hurricane Dora pictures from 1964 that I've shown in previous presentation. Uh, lots of flooding. And then suddenly the next morning, all that water downtown Live Oak was gone. Yep. Hmm. Because there was a sinkhole. One of hundreds of sinkholes that developed within the county. Uh, I took this picture and I thought it was funny. You had enough yet? Yes, I think we've had enough rain. Thank you, <laughs> Uncle Sam and everybody else. We've had enough. That's on 129 North. You couldn't go through that because it was flooded. Have they done any improvements so in case that happens again? Yes, supposedly, and they've tried to work on the drainage, and uh, it's just we are we are not in the best location for a town. And actually, I, I read something just a couple weeks ago. I found a, an article from uh, like 1885, and they were talking about Live Oak is in a bowl, and it shouldn't be where it is pretty much. Um, and that was funny. It's like, oh, how <laughs> much they do back then. Though. I mean, really. <laughs> it's just where it is. I mean, we've got yeah. high points, but just between that and the limestone and the sinkholes, it was, yeah. They, they have done some improvements to the sewage and septic and, and uh, water lines and retention. But if we get hit by, I mean, if anybody gets hit by 30 something inches of rain in a two day period, I'm not sure of anybody that could really take all that anyway. Well, you know, you said maybe hundreds. But they, I had 19 seat holes on my. Yeah, but see, there my we go. Problem, just my property. There you go. And I could put one of them. I could put three, or four pickup trucks down there, and you couldn't even see couldn't it. See it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're they're all over the place. All over the place. Uh, one of the issues, because we had this the sinkhole develop right behind the courthouse, was um, we have a lot of history. A lot of records, your land records, all those kinds of things were at the courthouse. And so we get in the next morning after the hurricane hits. We have no power. We have no water. They've had to shut off the water lines. I mean, everything is shut down. It's June. It's a little hot. It's also humid because of the rain we've had. And we are in there in the darkness with uh, battery operated lights moving out tons of records because that sinkhole is getting closer to the courthouse every hour we're going out uh, i'm like the disaster person for our, our office and so me and the boss and the clerk were going out and we were checking and they were spray painting like a line around it and every hour it was getting bigger and further and further which means it was getting closer to the courthouse and so we were unloading loading and unloading no i mean we have elevators but they weren't working so we we're having to take all this up by hand the yeah, national guard amazing. Do what? It was over in the basement. And we were, this is the basement picture, thank you. In the basement of the courthouse, which we do have a basement, uh, because we're at a higher point, one of the higher points. Um, so we were moving this, the National Guard and several other folks were helping us, and we were getting out as much as we can until the uh, government finally said, you can't go in there anymore. The building is unsafe, you can't. The sinkhole finally stopped about 10 feet from the corner of the courthouse, from the northwest corner of the courthouse. It finally stopped opening uh, at that point. But we couldn't go in here for months because not only was the sinkhole an issue that had to be filled up, uh, then because there had not been power for several days, there was an issue with mold and mildew. And so we had to have that cleaned and um, that took a while. So we were in a, we were in several different buildings that we were moved to. And most of us were at a what's now called the judicial annex. It was almost complete. It was almost complete when this hit. So we basically moved in with it 
mostly complete, bare floors and stuff that we moved in, and that's what we operated for, I think, three months before they could come in, um, do all kinds of restoration work in the courthouse, and go from there. The funny thing is, the first place we moved to was in this room here. We moved all this stuff that we could into this, this room, and we're going to operate open for business the next day, and then lo and behold, they find out there's water issues here too. Water was seeping up from the ground, and mold and mildew started developing in this building. So they had to shut it down. So a lot of our records had to stay behind in here as we just moved ourselves to that new judicial annex building that was almost complete. So we didn't have access to those records, but we had electronic records of them and microfilm. So we were able to use them. Uh, so that's good. That's one of those backup things that's good to have. Does it have so many sinkholes here in this area? Does that affect the building and yes. the insurance? Yes. <laughs> Yes, it does. Yes and yes. So you've got to be careful. I remember uh, in Sherwood Forest, there was a house that, I mean, so you go suck it in in the corner of a Sherwood Forest. Uh, so yeah, you drive by there today, it's it's flat. They filled it in. Nobody's building there anymore. Two there's lots of places. There were two of them? Okay. okay. I just remember the one. So, But uh, just all over the place. I mean, some of these sinkholes were huge. Like open up in cow fields and yeah, three or four cars wide, maybe like 10 cars wide. And deep. Some of them. Yeah. And huge, yeah. One of the county workers, uh, Cookie, might cook his, uh, his farmland. He had a huge one open up. It's crazy. So yes, it's affected building. It has affected insurance. Those kinds of things. And they didn't take down that building or the courthouse. Yeah, the courthouse. So yeah. It's a courtyard or not a courtyard. Mm -hmm. A little grassy area. Yeah, yeah. Um, Millennium Park. Now? Millennium Park, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, right there beside that. Yeah. Some of those old businesses on these buildings here. Thank you for bringing that up. These buildings here had to be yeah. torn down because that, <laughs> that same thing, although it damaged or almost damaged the courthouse, did damage them. And I've got pictures because I take pictures of that building. And it was funny. Uh, one of these buildings had a glass door on the back that had a metal, you know, the metal bar to push. And I've got pictures that you can see it where it's gradually bowing in because of the, the weight of the, the, the building collapsing. So yeah, they had to tear those down too. Those, those buildings have been there since the late 1800s, early, early 1900s. So we lost some historic buildings because of Debbie. So, but we moved on, we survived, we moved on, and we continue to operate even today. Um, I was glad because I think I was putting in 16-hour days for, for weeks and months after that. So it was good to get back to some sense of normalcy. Uh, but yes, other expansion coming in. Clouster Lumber Company came in from Europe and built at the Catalyst site, which is uh, off 90 West at the other I-10 intersection that we have. And a huge, excuse me, a huge lumber mill there. And they operated for a few years before they went bankrupt. During the COVID time, basically, and then they were bought out by a place called Binderholz, also from Europe. And they have not only updated the building and the facilities within, but they are expanding it. And there are several other businesses now at that catalyst site because of Binderholz. And so mm -hmm. it's bringing in more business, uh, more jobs, more people, that kind of stuff. So one of the many businesses that continue to come into Swanee County and expand in Swanee County. So that the, the Foley closing down should be a boost to them. It, it, it was terrible for Perry, but yeah. it may be a boost for Swanee County and for Benderholz. So, uh, I mean, on the interstate when it's Clouster, I remember seeing Clouster stuff all the time. So, uh, and then yesterday I had to add some more slides to this presentation because of something we just went through a few, few months ago. Mm -hmm. Hurricane Adalia, <laughs> yet another bad thing. So we have that hit, obviously, August. All of y'all were here, correct? I don't have to talk about it too much, yeah. Yeah, I'm still recovering from it. That was so fun to have even no cell phone service for a few days. No power for a few days. How many people were out for, I don't know, three days? Five days? Seven days? Eight? I mean, more than, how long were we all out? A week. A week? We had to spend a few days here at the library. <laughs> yeah. She's still out. <laughs> yeah. 
Still? Oh, okay, because that was tree, park. Tree yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dallas Park got hard. Yeah. I'd go out there for presentations. It's a bunch of blue tarped houses oh, out there. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Yeah, They'll never good. be the same out there. No. <coughs> yeah, yeah, lots of trees. Yeah. Oh, lots of damage. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was out, I just moved back into the city after 17 years of being out in the country. And we had power out for a couple of days. So that was rough because I was like, oh. At least we had water, though. Being a city, we still had water. So people were coming to take showers at our house. So we at least had that. People in the country did. And I remember those days. I used to live out there. So. But yeah, I mean, it was bad enough that we had president of the United States, for the first time in the history, a, a sitting president come and visit Swanee County and talk about the recovery. And of course, as we do, we are recovering. It's taking some time. We still, every week, we have county commission meetings, special call meetings, to extend a state of emergency. We've got one tomorrow morning at 8 or 8.30. Every week, we've got to have a meeting to extend that. So we're still getting by, and obviously not, not everybody's back home yet. But we're getting there, slowly but surely. We are continuing on. We will, we will survive and we will thrive. As we continue to the 21st century, of course, ecotourism is the, the big thing that most people come to Suwannee County to see and to, to enjoy. People move here from all over the country, especially uh, from Florida, like South Florida, that has now uh, grown so much it's very crowded. And so they move here. Hopefully not make us too crowded. <laughs> but uh, they move here because it's a very uh, very laid back, relaxed atmosphere. Um, overall, a nice community. People are more or less nice to you. Wave at you, say hi, that kind of stuff. Uh, some people are amazed at that. That's just life for us if you grew up here. But yeah, visit some of our many springs. Uh, Ecotourism, good thing for Swanee County. Let's see, what else do I have? Kind of ending with a picture of the courthouse, beautiful picture somebody took a few years ago I like to use. So who knows where we're gonna go from here? We're now into 2023, hard to believe. I think I started doing these presentations in about 2003. So um, who knows what's gonna happen to Swanee County in the future? So that ends our chronological study of Swanee County. And like I said at the beginning of the presentation, we're going to go into topical studies. So next month is crime in Swanee County. So we're going to hit the Alley and We're going to hit the Ted Money. We're going to hit a bunch of other crime that's happened over Swanee County's history. So any thoughts, comments, questions? I appreciate y'all being here. And hope y'all have a good Christmas and New Year with here. And Lord willing, see y'all next year if not before.